guys. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to see you, except for the lights, maybe. Um, Superfund. What is this, this thing called Superfund? This little montage is a collection of photographs of things al along the Gowanus, including positions for Superfund, positions against it, the coolest Superfund site in, in Brooklyn, and into, in the upper left corner is a, it's not modern art, it's actually a photograph of oil sheens on the Gowanus. So taking all of this and trying to combine it and address it and explain it is Superfund. What is this thing called Superfund? Superfund is actually a program by the federal government to address contaminated, abandoned contaminated waste, hazardous waste sites. The Gowanus Canal was designated a Superfund site in 2010 because of the contamination found there. Now, the, pros the, the concept of Superfund um, is based on a principle of, of the polluter pays. So in the case of a site where there is an entity or we call potentially responsible party um, who's viable and liable, they will then carry the weight of paying for the cleanup of a site. In the cases of sites where there is no party or they no longer exist or they just don't have the money, Superfund comes into play and federal do tax dollars, yours, mine, Superfund dollars go to clean up a site. In the case of the Gowanus Canal, we're very fortunate. There are several potentially responsible parties. Notice the word potentially. Even though they're responsible parties, we never drop that potentially for some reason. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, there are responsible or potentially responsible parties at the Gowanus Canal who will be footing the bill. Now, we, over the course of this afternoon, we've heard a lot about how the canal got polluted. And I'm going to kind of take you guys along the life cycle of a Superfund site in a very, very short time. So for those of you who are very familiar with the site, I'm going to be leaving out a lot of stuff. Forgive me. Um, only six minutes to complete a whole Superfund site cleanup? Amazing. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, the first thing that we're looking at when we get a site um, is the preliminary assessment um, site inspection. Um, with, this, with the Gowanus Canal, we kind of knew what was going on there. You've probably seen this image several times where the original Gowanus Creek was filled in and this canal was, it's a man-made canal, it was built up. Um, the ad additional land was, was um, created in Brooklyn by filling in the wetlands. And here's this great water body that became an industrial, uh, an industrial pathway for people to bring goods into, into Brooklyn. Eight years after it was built, it was, it, was, um, it was declared a nuisance by the Board of Health. Because they tried to, they didn't want to spend a lot of money on pr building the canal, um, they didn't, when it was built, there was no flushing system put at the head of the canal. Hence, it was a dead end at the top. So no fresh water was able to come in, and very quickly it became, it became a nuisance. How did they try to address it initially? more sewer mains were added and additional sewage was ran into the canal to kind of flush it out. That didn't really work very well. And so in 1911, a flushing tunnel was built that brought fresh water from Buttermilk Channel into the head of the canal. Unfortunately, the flushing tunnel broke in 1965, but it is, it is being repaired. Uh, when, that, when, when the canal was built, Multiple um, businesses, industries were built along the canal. The three major sources of contamination were these manufactured gas plants. This is an example of one. Basically what happened is that coal tar was a byproduct of what was the gas that was, was created at these plants. Coal tar um, was, was um, actually leaches into the canal and continues to this day to contaminate the canal. In addition to the coal tar, there's a whole host of other industries, and I think we've kind of touched on them over the course of the afternoon. How did the site become a Superfund site? Well, we got a letter from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation requesting that EPA look at the Gowanus Canal and see if it could be listed, placed on that list of Superfund sites, the National Priorities List. Well, we looked at it, and it was, in fact, placed on the list. Once it got placed on the Superfund list, we started something called the Remedial Investigation and Feasibility Study. 
You'll notice over the course of my presentation that acronyms are flying like RAIN. That's how we speak in the federal government. <laughs> or EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Well, this RIFS, this Remedial Investigation Feasibility Study, looks at the nature and extent of contamination at the site and what are feasible options for addressing it. We went right out to the canal and there we were. That long pole, we actually did some core sampling in the canal, and those two piles of dark brown mass isn't what you think it is. It's actually sediment from the canal. Um, hundreds of years of worth of contaminations has built up at the bottom of the canal. Here's a schematic of what that looks like. You see that tan at the bottom is the native sediment that was the original bottom of the Gowanus Canal. The fill on the side was when the canal was built and filled in. That black mass on the bottom was that photograph that you saw previously. In some places in the canal, it's as deep as 20 feet thick. Um, it averages about 10 feet. Um, there are a lot of contaminants contained within it. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. I'm going to test you all on that at the end of the presentation. We call those PAHs and a whole host of things. I won't bore you with the list and litany of, of contamination. Heavy metals are also in there. Anyway, moving forward, here's some examples of that coal tar, as I said, continues to rise up and contaminate. You can see it on warm days. Some of the lighter constituents rise up and you can see them on the surface of the canal. Another example of that, this is across from uh, Lowe's. Um, this is what we call the punami, um, the, soup, <laughs> the, 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 the CSOs. In addition to those, those manufactured gas plants, the, the CSOs, as Ate was talking about a little bit earlier, they also contribute contamination to the canal. We're not only talking about biological, but the street runoff does contain some of those same aromatic hydrocarbons uh, as well as heavy metals. So the CSOs also had to be addressed as part of our remedy. Punami, gone. What did EPA come up with? Well, we came up with a proposed plan. We came out to the community. Well, we had been with the community all during this time, but we came out with our plan. How are we going to address this, this, this problem? And we came up with our final decision, our record of decision, which we signed. We had a great big event where some of you were um, on September 30th of 2013. That day is very important because the next day the government shut down and I had to go home. Um, <laughs> but anyway. This is what we came up with. The canal was broken into three areas. The, the, the middle section is the area that's the most highly contaminated. The upper is, not, is, is contaminated but not as bad, and the lower in purple is the least contaminated area. EPA is going to be basically removing the contamination from the bottom of the canal by dredging it. We're going to cap the dredge areas. We're also going to be addressing the combined sewer overflows. They also have to be arrested so that it doesn't recontaminate the canal. One of the turning basins, the first street basin, is going to be excavated and contamination removed from there, and a portion of the fifth street basin. The cost, $506 million. Will we be paying for that? We, by we, I mean you and me and all of the other federal taxpayers. No. Again, we do have the potentially responsible, note, potentially responsible parties, PRPs, will be footing the bill for that. This is what that cap looks like. So you can see all multi-layers. I'm not going to go into great detail, but that's what the cap looks like that we're going to be applying at this contaminated, some of the areas where the contamination actually goes into the native sediment. Moving quickly, right now, where are we? We're in the remedial design phase of, of, of the site. EPA is looking, actually doing the design, and we anticipate, well, where, what year are we in now? 2014? By 2016, our remedy, our design should be completed, and we'll start cleaning up that first portion of the canal. Two years later, the middle portion of the canal, and another two years later, the final portion of the canal. So in about 2022, we expect to have the canal cleaned up. Now, everybody likes this one particular Porsche slide, deletion. Will the, will the Gowanus Canal be removed from the list of Superfund sites? What do you think? No. That's right. 
It will not be. Why? Because contamination remains there. And whenever contamination remains at a site, it does not get removed from the NPL. But EPA doesn't walk away. It falls into a program called five-year review. And every five years, in perpetuity, EPA will be coming back to make sure that the remedy we implemented at the site is acting as designed. My time is coming to, to a close. Reuse. This is what everyone wants to see happen, particularly EPA at a site. Will, can it be brought back to reuse? Now, although the site is not going to be um, removed from the Superfund list, water conditions and the contamination that exists there will be reduced greatly. So I look forward to seeing you all from now until 2022, and we'll talk about Superfund sites, and I'll be here again and again and again and again. Thank you.